Dame Dash, so good to see you, my friend. Appreciate you so much. You good are, you, leg- you know, your, your hustle is legendary. Uh, the things you've done, the markets you have made, the things I believe that you will do. I just had to share, you know, your story with my audience. And, and I know that you're going you're gonna to help people that maybe are trapped see a way out. Yeah, that seems like uh, the task at hand, you know? Yeah. You know, lately I've been uh, I've been looking at myself. You know, as I was younger, I always thought I was a superhero, and people were like convincing me or trying to convince me that I was not. This is when I was young. I always thought I was invincible, and I'm not Batman. I've realized, you know, my job is to fight for my culture and people that just aren't aware of, you know, their strength, their self awareness. So I've renamed myself not Batman. I'm that man, you know. So my job is to be a superhero that fights for culture and independence, but you know, a big thing about me is you can't help anybody unless you can help yourself. Mm. So you have to lead by example, you know what I mean? So my goal is for everyone to be that man or that woman, you know, and uh, to showcase what that looks like. You so, know, right so now we're gonna fight for narrative. Yeah, let, let's start there. Like how, how important is it for people watching? Like, I hear everybody wants to save the whole world. They wanna help their moms and pops and everybody, but like, How important is it for the audience to take care of self first and get that really secure? Well, you know, I have this thing. You know, I teach this class to principals from the OSG. The OSG is 150 uh, predominantly black principals all over the country. And I teach them an entrepreneurial class on uh, Tuesdays. But we have one discussion. And the one thing, the first question I ask is, what's your selfish dream? Mm. Selfish one. Because, you know, again, most, most people that I dream and everyone that have this and that, but you don't have it. So in order to help someone, you can't hurt yourself to help anybody. To me, that's an oxymoron. So you have to make so much money that you can help all the people that you love. And if you're fighting for love, that should be a lot of people. But at the end of the day, it's about, to me, figuring out what exactly your clear dream is. And, you know, I have a process. You know, I work in dimensions. So my first dimension is the pure dream. And dreams don't cost a dollar. So Mm. why dream cheap? Mm. I don't want a dream to survive. I want a dream for the perfect world. So for example, you don't say, oh, I want a yacht, but I'm worried about the gas. You don't worry about the gas in your dream. It's a dream. I love that, man. It has to be unobstructed. But it has to be unobstructed. So sometimes you might dream around people and they're like, these are the reasons why you can't do it and blah, blah, blah. So then you start visualizing. So that messes that whole process up. So you have to also keep people around you that can dream or at least aren't going to obstruct yours. After that, the next dimension is you got to put it on paper, you know, and, you know, that's another dimension. You put it on paper and it's clear. You can write it down in a couple of sentences and other people that have the same dream can also read, identify with it. And you'll find that, you know, you can come together. And then the next uh, dimension, making it actually happen. And then the last dimension now is in the metaverse and the multiverse. So, you know, it's always important to be one dimension ahead, regardless of whether industry is uh, ready for it or not. It's just good to be savvy at it. So that's how I do things. And yeah, pardon? How how important, Dame, is it like you have been around some people that have just like, I mean, cracked some super ceilings, right? And, and how important, are, you know, their influence on you or your influence on them? I don't know exactly which one influenced the other or whether it was whether it was back and forth. Right. How important was it to be around those people that broke through for, for you to break through? Well, I, I have to be around. I have to be inspired to work. So, you know, if someone inspires me. And I see that they have the potential to be great, you know, they've inspired me enough to teach them how to be great independently and how to understand how to leverage your own celebrity and understanding how to do things on your own, how effective that also understanding what residual income is and how to get that. Mm. So it's a double, it's a, it's, I've always have to be inspired, but usually what I do is I give the game away. So most people that empower people like a Kanye or a Jay-Z or a Lee Daniels or a Rachel Roy, they don't teach them how to do it because you're no longer needed. You mm-hmm. know, I actually teach you how to fire me how to get rid of me so that you can go make your dreams come true and I could go do my thing because I got dreams. So, you know, being a person that helps other people 
people with things, sometimes thank God, definitely selfless because you're investing in someone, you're not investing completely in yourself. So my thing is, let me make you independent. And you've inspired me enough to make sure you know how to keep you and your family rich without me, which you've seen just by reading the Forbes. And then I can go and use whatever I learned from helping you to help me because I got dreams and I yeah. got a family. And I, I learned that really investing in myself is really important to be fearless about what I believe in and my point of view. And having good taste is everything. Uh-huh. So I, I, I've heard you say before, like when they hurt, I hurt. What, what do you mean by that? Because I really, I mean, I think I know what you mean and I relate to that. I make it easy. If you have a child, you have children. Yes. When they hurt or they're sick, wouldn't you say, give me that sickness anytime because you feel, you feel worse than they do, right? When, right. when you love something and it hurts, you mm -hmm. feel it. So unfortunately, I'm a, I'm a lover. Pause. I love my culture. I love my family. I love anyone that's helped me survive. So when they hurt, I feel it. No matter where I am. So, you know, I come from another social class where we had to deal with like survival skills, which is what the basis and the DNA of our original music was. It's about survival. And a lot of people that I've survived with, they're still there doing the things they were doing before. I am not, but I still got to hear about what they're doing. I, when they go to jail, I still got to deal with bail. I still got to bid with them. I still got to make sure that they get the proper rehabilitation that they deserve because they're not getting it just from being a friend, you know? So I end up knowing all the problems that are, are hurting the people I love. So there's jail reform, there's health, you know, there's economic literacy, there's education, there's just, you know, unrecognized trauma. I have to deal with all of those things. And that's why I'm part of something called the commission because if I just think about something that bugs me, if I internalize, that becomes cancerous. So mm -hmm. I don't hold anything in. As soon as I feel it, I got to go do it. So if I'm sitting around worrying, that means I'm doing nothing. But if let's say I feel like I'm too heavy or I'm, you know, a little chunky, if I'm not in the gym, then I'm not fixing nothing. I feel better right. when I'm actually working on it. So I got to always be working on what's bothering me or it gives me anxiety. Dane, do you think that you mentioned financial uh, Ill, uh, literacy? Do you think it's financial illiterate or is it financial programming that we've been programmed? We've been programmed. Think about this. I, I, school, I, don't, I, don't, I don't believe that we're financially illiterate. I think that we've been programmed to save for the banks, to give money to the man. Well, that's, to me, that's being unconsciously illiterate then. Uh, you yeah. know what you should be doing, but you're right. It's a program. So what mm -hmm. I noticed when I was in school, because I went for a little while, that they never taught me what to do when I make money. They never taught me how to pay taxes. They never taught me, you know, what, what capital gains was. None of those things. What they taught me to do was have a job and mm -hmm. to be afraid to actually not have a job, to not go to school. You know, fear is a very serious tool used to control masses. Fear. Wow. So, yeah. So when I say literacy, let's say this, translation. Things aren't speaking to us in the language that we understand. Sometimes it's speaking to us in a language that shuts us down, that triggers us, that intimidates us to make us think, oh my God, it sounds so difficult that I should just not do it. And that happens. I'm watching this happening in industries, even like in the NFT world. I'm like, yo, this shit is so hard that I don't see any creative not being triggered or, or, or uninspired by having to sit down and listen and be so articulate, articulate. Most people that are creative like to talk through the language of their art. So language is important. So we're not taught things in a way that don't give us anxiety. They're actually taught to us in a way to shut us down. Do you mm -hmm. notice that uh, a school and a hospital and a courthouse, they all look exactly the same? You know, they're all very uninviting. And that seems to be intentional, you know? Like, why wouldn't you want to teach somebody in an environment where they're inspired, in front of an ocean with right. art all over it? Why all the dull lighting in the same walls and the same bricks? You know, even going into a hospital, why wouldn't you want it to feel like a spa? Why do you or, want it to yeah. feel like a jail? Right. So that you don't go get yourself healthy. So that you have to go only when you have to, and then now you're dependent. So, you know, why don't they teach us about space travel, how to lobby, how to pass laws, how to be a politician? All of that's intentional. So mm -hmm. we have, you know, again, our brain, we only use, what, 8% of it? Even though we know a lot of shit, we don't know we know it. We don't know what our brain can do. 
So yeah, it's I think our job is when we learn things to teach it in a language that doesn't intimidate. And a lot of the things that I see you doing are things that I'm like, yeah, I, I definitely knew that shit. Like as far as the jets and the write-offs, but it was me looking for that knowledge. But unless you think you're gonna have a private jet, you're not gonna look to do it. Right, 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 exactly. You know, if you've never had a private jet before, you don't know what it is. You know, there's no class in having money or each actually keeping money. Cause that's the hardest part. I can't hold a dollar, you know? And not because I'm spending it on dumb stuff, it's because I'm always investing in things that inspire me. And the only way that I can do it on my own is to pay for it, which happens sometimes to default. But independence to me is freedom and being creative the way I want to be means everything to me, you know? How important you look, you, you've, you've made it in fashion, TV, uh, music. Uh, how important is, you, and you mentioned this, becoming a celebrity like mar figuring out the marketing game like if you if you took the hierarchy of things in a business where does marketing sit in any business whether it's fashion or plumbing marketing is everything mm. like if you have the work and nobody knows and no one's gonna buy it but part of your marketing is your work gotta be super good you know mm -hmm. you know so like you know in the street you market it don't put up boards you know you just you know brand a certain color and you make sure you're consistently out there every day and your work is good. But the thing about this world is you pay a celebrity to bring attention to your product. So you always have to go to a third person. If you yourself become the celebrity, you get to cut out that middleman and you get to make money off yourself. You're not gonna rob yourself, you know, at least you shouldn't, or you won't be mad. You're gonna show up, you're gonna understand. Like for me, dealing with other celebrities is a pain because they all have the little idiosyncrasies and silly stuff. Little. And they always think they make you so much more money than you make, you know, yeah. they don't get it. They yeah. just, it's a big entitlement there. Yeah. So that's why I, you know, went from investing in other people's names into investing into myself because I'd rather have full margin. I don't want 20% of somebody's 50% or 10% of what they're getting. You know, if I control the business and I know how to make it, I don't have to pay the celebrity, it's all mine. Number one, if it's all mine, it's all theirs, meaning my family's. They get the benefit from it so my thing is i ain't hustling for now i'm hustling for later i'm always mm. looking at the future because i can always survive but narrative is important you know but this is time for me to make some money you know what i mean like i need to make some i haven't made enough money i can look at i'm always making just enough that i can throw it back into something else you know i'm always you know feeding that machine but mm. this year that's going to change because a lot of times in industry like when you're in industries um that aren't that are new and no one knows about it. Sometimes it's like not the best thing to be first. I've been first so much that, that it's like, I gotta you know, smoke weed to wait for people to catch up. You know what I mean? And you can look at the receipts and the things that I was saying and doing. I had a streaming service before Netflix. You know what I'm saying? You know, I was putting out things on YouTube before YouTube was even being monetized. Dude, it's, it's painful to be early, man. It, it's expected to me now, you know, yeah. when I was like 20, you know, you gotta remember if you look at the receipts, when I was talking about independence, people really thought I was crazy. Like, really thought I was crazy. Like, you're talking like that to them and da-da-da-da-da. And like, I'm like, what are you talking about? You know, the biggest trick to control somebody strong is to make them think they're not strong. And mm -hmm. weak people do it all the time. You know, it's all about here. So it's about really understanding who you are, what you can do, but also making sure you're healthy. Because at the end of the day, the wealth is being healthy. Because you yeah. have all the money in the world. If you're not mentally healthy, you're going to be miserable. And I know a lot of a lot of people that are. And if you're physically, or you're sitting wheezing, or you're in a hospital bed, like right now, I'm diabetic, and something happened. One of my uh, uh, some blood vessels busted in my. Eye. I got blood all over my eye, and one of them, it's like having a cobweb on it. And I'm like, damn, how I if I, you know I'm I'm, I'm happy because I know it's going to go away. But what if it didn't? Right. You know. And what can I do to make sure this never happens again? So, you know, it's about really being strategic about architecting your future. It's about being a time traveler. It's about going 10 years into the future, seeing what you want your life to look like, and then coming back and making sure that you get to that path, eliminate everything that's going to deter you, and just make sure you focus on everything that's going to get you there as quick as possible. See, the difference between an amateur and a professional is speed. So if you look at a, a high school game or a college game and a professional game, they're all doing the same thing. The professionals are just doing it twice as fast. 
So you just have to be able to do things twice as fast. You have to react as fast. You got to, you know, jump on opportunities fast. You know, it's just about being a certain level of fast. You know what I mean? It's speed. So, so, so Dame, on that note, uh, you know, I, the first 20 years I was in business, I, I was raised by a single mom. My dad died and I didn't, I, I had grit and I had hard work and I was disciplined, but I didn't know what I was doing and I didn't collaborate with people. It wasn't until I started collaborating with other people that I sped up. Like I'm collaborating with you today and, and you with me, mm -hmm. right? What, what advice would you give the business owner out there, the entrepreneur about taking the time and money to collaborate with other people to speed up, accelerate their process? Okay, so to me, business is war. And there's battles to get to war or to win the war. You know, you can win a couple of battles on your own and you'll, you know, a learning experience. Even a loss in a battle is a win because you learn from it. Mm -hmm. But you can do that on your own. But to win the war, you got to get with other generals that have armies, other bosses that can do things that you cannot. And in exchange, you do things for them that they cannot. But at the end of the day, it's about having what I call the circle of success. It's about making a group of people rich so you never go broke. So mm. here's the thing. If I got 10 people in my crew and I know I'm reckless. You know, if I make them all at least have two, three million dollars a piece. If let's say I go broke, because I, you know, again, I, I bet it all every time and I wouldn't suggest everybody do it. It's a different kind of thing, but I love it. <laughs> and if I go broke, all, all I got to do now from them eight people is get, you know, 100,000 or 200,000 from each of them, which will not hurt them. And I'm back a million in, you know, and they're not going to not give it to me because I made them rich. I helped them. This is mm -hmm. what the whole thing is. And vice versa. When y'all need it, I'm there if I got it, you know. So it's about getting a circle of people that you know you could always like in business to get loans. You need the equity and then you need somebody. Then you got to get the loan. You got to put up 20 percent. So some people have people that just put up that 20 percent. Like this is my equity guy. And this is why I get the loan from. So to get a billion dollars, you only need 200 million. And no matter where you at, you're going to get it. But you got to have that person that got it. You give them 10, 20 percent for doing that. You need a team. And you can't do everything. So I got 100 ideas and I want all of them to come to fruition. And again, I'm the one that's dumb enough to fund all of them, which is why I can never look at money. I wouldn't suggest you do that. But, you know, again, for me, it's a narrative thing. I can't expect people to do things that have never been done before. So I got to do it myself so I can go co-sign it. So I'm doing the football leagues, right? Uh, you know, I got the AFA, uh, um, you know, uh, Arena Football League. I got the team in Tampa, the Tampa Cyclones. I got about seven teams and people that are ready to come through, but I'm like, don't come through yet. Let me go through it first so I can tell you the problem so I can really officially stand up for it. I would never send somebody to invest in something that I haven't actually done a little bit myself because I got to be able to stand up for it, you know? Let, let me ask you, uh, and uh, man, that is important, real important. Yeah. Where, where do you, I know you talk about being the boss, be, being, being uh, you know, having control, but what about the guy or gal that's not meant to be the boss? They can't handle the pressure. They can't handle the stress. Uh, where, where do they fall in line? How do they find not fall in line? Probably bad wording. Well, but. First, we got to get them some therapy because it's going to destroy them because if, no one doesn't not want to be the boss. And if you're not the boss, it's just not many people want to fight to be the boss. But who uh -huh. doesn't want to be the boss? You know, so I think a therapist like, why you don't want to be the boss? Oh, I might. Like, Most people think they can't. It's about a flip. It's about knowing you can. not So if you don't want to be the boss, then I would say go to another channel and get some help. But who doesn't want to be the boss? It's about the fight. Nothing good happens without some fight. Mm -hmm. You're only great when you're doing something that makes you a little uncomfortable. You got to be a little uncomfortable to grow. To mm -hmm. make muscle, you got to lift weights. You got to hurt. It doesn't happen overnight. So I, I can't even speak in that mentality. And I'm sorry, Grant. I just yeah. can't. Yeah, yeah. I, but, I can't, talk, I can't. I only talk boss. It's the only language I know. Right, right. And let's, let's people say start you, talking you, anything else, I'd be like, wah, 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 wah. what is that? Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? The language, it's a language you don't understand. So, well, so let me ask you, let, let's, let's say me and you, let's say me and you start a business. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like if both of us are bosses, then we don't really have one. Would you agree with that? hundred percent. The par partners are, that's different. Now, okay. Now we're partners. Okay. So how, how does somebody that's listening say, Hey man, I got to, cause I'm subordinate in situations. Me too. I, okay. In my, good. In my house, yeah. I am not the boss. I've got given it, got it away. It, got it. Okay. I'm and not the cool boss. With that, right? Well, put it like this. A hundred percent. You know, to me, 
ego sometimes drives people to want to be the boss uh -huh. or be in control. This, what I've noticed is it really scares people to think things through. And mm -hmm. if they have somebody around that'll think for them, they'll definitely let that person do it. And I've been that person for a lot of people and it's traumatizing to always have to think for people. For you so, or for them? For other people, it's also uh -huh. traumatizing to have to think things through for myself. There's a lot of things I don't want to have to deal with, but I push through the fall. Right, right. I hate having to think things through to see what it looks like, but I, you got to do it sometimes. Uh -huh. you know? But if you have someone that's better at you, or if you're doing a lot, I, I'm definitely the one that'll delegate. And when I do delegate, the people that I delegate to, they I have to give them complete control because they got to do what they got to do. They got to be able to make decisions. You see, a company that can only move by one boss and when he makes moves and only by one boss's order is a bad company. I try to train the people that work with me to be able to make my life as easy as possible. They have to be able to do things when I'm not around. But for me, I have to run the cash register first just right. so I know if they're doing their job right or wrong. Right. But once I know it, I can't they be on the street marketing. I can't be doing all that shit. I'm, 50, I'm 51 years old this week. I mean, man. man. You know man, what I mean? I can't, I can't I do hope, the things I was doing. I hope I look as good as you when I'm 51. Thank you. Well, how old are you? How old are you? 64. I knew you was going to say that. Yeah. You know, yeah. I know that joke. You don't yeah. have a mustache. Yeah. So you can't tell when you don't have a mustache. But, right. <laughs> right. but right. I know you, you make it come up. But again, my, I, listen, if, you, if that's the future, look at, at 60, still feeling, and no one can tell how old you are. Right. Then that's because the thing about it is what I'm learning is we don't really grow old. Our soul grows old. Our right. body can grow old, but you can keep rejuvenated. As long as there's things that inspire you, you never get old. Right. So I've seen people that are 35 that look 50 something. I'm like, Dude. what are you doing? How did you age yourself? What happened? Dude, I, yeah, I was 19. I was dead, man. I'm more alive today than I was then. Um, let me ask you this. Uh, how important is sales to any organization or any dream? I'm talking about selling something. I mean, if you don't sell anything, you don't make no money. So mm -hmm. this is the issue I'm having in real time. The last year, I just been uh, two years is COVID. So I've been doing things, but I've been working on movies, but I've been putting up my own bread. So I got like four movies and I partnership with another and they done. And I'm like, yo, I'm not putting up another dollar until I make some money off the things that I've already created. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 you know, it's still a flip for me. I'm still in that situation. I don't get a fee. I put my money up and I make the money based on how many people buy it. Like my shit really gotta be good. So yeah, when you have a job, you get paid whether that company makes money or not. And if you don't, then you have a lawsuit. You can, you know, there's a problem there. Especially when you have payroll, you can't even be late with payroll. I hate payroll. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, see, you want to put yourself in a they, position they, like me. I've been telling people, yo, if I don't make money, if I don't sell and people don't buy it, I don't eat. And I got to make enough money that I eat well because of the fact that I'm choosing this life and that my family eats well. They cannot be ever affected by me being so brave. So that's my thing. My kids can't ever feel it. So I have no choice. I have to sell. So so when what would you say to the artist or the business person that's like, I just want to create the art. I just want to have the idea. I don't want to be the marketer. I don't want to be the sales guy. And I don't want to manage the business. I just want to be the artiste. I just want to be the celebrity. I, I say it every day, but it's not a realistic thing. So, you know, you have to get a team but these things you have to do first. No one's going to work harder for you than you work for yourself, mm -hmm. period. And I'm not working harder for anybody than they work for themselves, unless I'm trying to rob them and I'm not trying to rob them. So you have to deal with the things you don't like. Just because you don't want to doesn't mean that you have that luxury until you have that luxury. You can't do that. If you have a dream, you have to do every single thing it takes. When I was, doing, when, when I was um, putting Jay-Z out, First, when we first put Jay-Z out, I had to jump on that stage with him because the show was whack. I had because he had no hit record. So I had to do every single thing. I had to be the hype man. I had to be the businessman. I had to go collect the money. I had to go make the deals. I had to go find the distribution. You got to be built for this. You know what I would say? Pull your skirt up. That's what I would say. You know, this ain't for what you want. Stop being so spoiled and entitled. You don't have mm. that option. Life mm. is a test. 
Your test is to do the things you don't like. That's what the test is. No one's going to give you anything, and I'm not your father or your mother. What I'm saying is stop complaining. Pull your skirt up. Does the entitlement thing, you know, because I've, he I've heard you say that two or three times now. Because okay. I'm dealing with artists all the time. Uh -huh. And but, plus, but, I got kids. Kids are entitled, but they, they're the only ones I'm dealing with that with. My children. I, I was I was in a room on Clubhouse called White Entitlement. There's like 1,800 black people that I was the only white guy there. And, and somebody brought me up and they said, why, why are you in this room? I said, because uh, I'm trying to learn about the white entitlement thing. <laughs> but I'm here. I'm hearing you say, and I said, I can't go to my so white. Why you don't have white entitlement? Because you got money. White entitlement comes from someone broke, a white broke person that only has their whiteness to still think that they got one over you. That's what that is. It's just a tool. Like, yo, no matter what you got, if I'm white, I'm better. That's what that is. But that's it. Okay, what, but can entitlement apply to any race or or? Every, any what do you mean? Are you kidding? Entitlement applies to everybody. I deal uh -huh. with it every second. There's always this entitlement. You know, once you get somebody used to something, whether you know they deserve it or not, they start thinking that they earn it, mm -hmm. that they that you work for them, that your job is to make them money all day long, make their life easier. You know, just like you know. Entitlement to think the government's supposed to take care of you. I'm like, why do you think the government's supposed to take care of you? Because they oppressed you? Because, they, you know, but it's a different day. Uh -huh. You know, the oppression, there's an internet out there. There's ways to get money from your house all day long. You got to look for it. If you're lazy, you're just going to lose, period. You know, if you're so depressed because you're scared and you don't have nothing and you ain't doing nothing to fix it, go get therapy. But don't have that, don't spread that energy around. Mm -hmm. They're probably too lazy to go get the therapy, though. Listen, there's people that I love that I'd be like, yo, go get some therapy just so we could not don't have to deal with this. Like if I feel like I'm doing something that's affecting my, my family unconsciously, I'm going to go get therapy. And if not for me, it's for the people I love. So if your depression and you're not doing your lackluster efforts is making it where your children are starving, then you got to really, really get your life together. Mm -hmm. Hey, how do you fix, Dame? What would you say to the young person out there that's like they, they grew up in poverty? Can I can uh, I smoke on your uh, thing? Do whatever you want to do, man. Cool. I just want to disrespect. Yeah, man. Shit, I ain't. I. I. What? What does that call? Second hand. It's not second hand smoke. It's not gonna get me from here, is it? Also, it's legal. As, it's legal as fuck right now. And yeah. literacy in the cannabis world is a big deal. I've been yeah. doing. I, literally, I, I. I came from. I had to quit using it though, man, because I was. I, I ended up in a treatment center. That was my. That was my opening we, drug. For we. No, 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 no. I had everything, but that was the one that. That's the one it started with. So I, lo I lost the right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's, what, that's messed up. Yeah, but it is. At least you, at least you got, but, you know, you got other things. I mean, for me, I think cannabis is an industry that's been suppressed because yeah, of how oh, good 1, it is. 1,000 percent people. Uh-oh, your connection's getting bad, Dave. No longer suppressed. So just get it on how to make sure you're, you know, on that curb. Sp space travel, yeah. all the new things are the hey, things Dane, that I Dane, think we Dane, need to be go literate back in. Inside. It's about being literate in the new stuff, not the old. The old go. stuff was meant to control. Dame, go back inside. You still hear me? Yeah, go back inside, man. It got bad. Okay, wait, wait. Man. It might clean up now. Let me see. You good? Yeah, it's good now, but it got bad when you started walking around. I'm sorry. What I was just saying. No, that's is, all right. What I was saying no, is no. investing in the new stuff is where it's at. The yeah, old so, stuff so for me, to control us. Yeah, for me, it just it, it just interfered with my, you know, I was spending time on it, right? So I'm like, okay, I can't, I don't I don't have this privilege Here, right now. Here's my here's my my thing. Unless you made I didn't smoke or get high till I made my first million dollars. Mm -hmm. After I had millions, actually the thing was being getting smoking used to make me paranoid because I was in the street. Yeah. And you know, it was a big pimping video. There was no champagne in Barbados. No, no, no. We were in Trinidad. In Trinidad, so I started, we, we were smoking, and I didn't get paranoid. And I was like, wow, this is this is actually cool. And it also made me a little more patient with the people that are catching up. Everyone's uh -huh. kind to me. Everyone has to catch up. You know? <laughs> but I'm all right with it. It gives me patience. But I ain't trying to say go smoke. I was yeah. just saying it's an industry that people need to understand they can make some money off of. Yeah, I hear you. Hey, let me ask you, how important is it owning the real estate? I've heard you talk about own, being an owner. Real estate is everything. Mm -hmm. You know, to me, it's the only thing, the bank that you can live in, fix, sell and make money and you still enjoy it, you know? So a, a lot of what our company is doing is the real estate. You know, I love flipping, flipping properties because I like to redo them. 
You know what I mean? And owning bricks is everything because when you own the bricks, when you're the landlord, you make the law. When you're the landlord, you make the law in your bricks. So the president can't come in your house and disrespect you. He got to go if you say so. That's the law. You're the president in your house. So you can't expect to be the boss unless you own the bricks. So that's mm -hmm. the reason why I'm trying to actually do all these things and my initiatives and uh, renaissance different places is by bringing a team, building, uh, building all kinds of stuff out there. But the narrative is we got to be the landlords, period. Yeah. And then what do what do people need to learn about that game? Because like like I was brought up, it was save your money, buy a house. And then I looked at it. and I'm like, OK, the people that are saving money and buying a house, they're they're, they're actually trapped middle class people. Well, and, that's a and, program. That's a program. Yeah. 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 So, so I've said, hey, don't save the money, invest the money in yourself and your, in your business and then buy real estate that pays you rent. What would you say to people that are investing in cash flow real estate? and in their business and their sales first, not the stuff. I think that's the way, you know, I think you have to invest in something that's gonna give you residual income. There's, there's so many things that you could be a landlord in, cars, mm -hmm. buildings. Mm -hmm. There's so many things that can, there's so many little hustles out there that just give you residual income. You see, I've been very focused on being creative and narrative for the last like 10 years, a decade. You know, when like Steve Jobs just went, and just walked around and, this is what I've been doing. I went and opened up art galleries. I was so burnt out from being in a corporate system and not being inspired that I had to run around the world to look for people to inspire me and new things to do and new businesses, just new stuff, you know? And I've done all that. But the solid business, now that I have a, a, a solid family, I got a baby, I got a wife, you know, I'm not fighting to see my kids. Now it's time to invest in their future and do what's solid. So that's to me the most solid thing. You know, I invest in content because content is real estate as well. Yes. It gives residual income. Yes. You know? and, 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 you know, that's what my thing was. I'm like, I wanna do something that makes me really happy, but I'm really sure about the content. But now that I've got and tackled that, and I think I've mastered it as far as knowing how to make it at a certain price point and understanding how to monetize it, I've been focusing all my energy on getting things that most don't do in entertainment and using my celebrity to leverage it. So, you know, if, 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 if like I have a brand, so if I can go into a, 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 a neighborhood that may not be the wealthiest and, you know, for the same price for, or for the price that it costs to build something at that price point, put eco-friendly stuff, cool, chic stuff, and then put my name on it, then it really becomes something that's worth more. Your name can be worth more if you put it on bricks, but you have to make your name mean something. You have to be consistent. So having bricks without a brand, you'll still win. But if you right. have a brand to put on bricks, then it really makes things easy. I mean, you know, I'm, then, I don't want to so, look at Trump. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. So so how important is, is fighting for success then? So, so that you, everything, every day, you should be fighting to get better. But what are you living for? Life with no purpose is not life. Mm. You know, living to survive is depressing. And mm -hmm. that's the reason why most people are depressed. They're not dreaming. You have to visualize your dream. And the dream to me is always to get paid to do something that you would do for free. Mm -hmm. Period. So if you're doing something you would do for free, if you love it, you should be doing it so much you're the best at it and that you're so good at it that you get paid. People you have to be inspired. Yet. Yeah. You know, so and then got, understanding got, multiples and understanding what that means and all the business that comes with it, you know, you, it, it's a challenge. It's not meant to, life's not meant to be easy and people think it is. It's not. It's meant to, two, see, to push boundaries. You're meant to sacrifice so the people you love do not have the same problems. Right. I got two pages of notes from you, man. Last question, all right? What does the term 10X mean to you? 10X means if you're making $10 million a year, your company's worth 100. And you can sell your company for 10 times whatever you've been making for the last three years. EBITDA, or EBITDA, however you pronounce it. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, whenever I get into a business, I want to know what the multiple is. 10X is always a beautiful multiple. And then, and then, Dame, do you see people underestimating, one, the effort that it takes to make something successful? And number two, how much is needed in life in order to create that prosperity uh, that, that you're talking about, the abundance? Patience is needed. 
Uh -huh. So the problem with people that are in survival mode is they want to get air and oxygen as soon as possible. So, you know, thinking that you have to buy something and fix it and go through all the loans and whatever it takes to go through it, you know, sometimes it might take a year or two to start getting money. But that happens. In a real business, corporately, it takes 10 years of loss to actually start to have profit. This is what you're programmed to believe. And that's what intimidates people from doing it. And that's what makes people have to use other people's money. But at the end of the day, anything that's going to make you a profit is not going to happen some most of the time in a month. It's not going to happen sometimes in a year. But as long as you're fighting and doing something you love and you're seeing it actually evolve, then that's what should be fueling your fire. And you have to expect some struggle. It's going to happen. It's part of the game. You have to struggle a little when you're starting a business. It's never rosy. So everyone wants it to be peaches and creams all day. But that's the reason why they don't move. But they're already in, in, in it's not peaches and cream now. Yeah. So you have to work until it's peaches and cream. Hustle for later. That's the name of your book, man. Yeah, it's hustle for your last name, not your first. Mm, I like that. Hey, man, I want to do more things with you, man. Well, right, you I, really women. I definitely want to do things. Pause. I mean, let's go. Let's go. You, we, you know, people don't know, but you and I talked about yesterday about the, the TV uh, network that I'm creating. And you gave me some great ideas about offering it for free, free works. So I appreciate, you know, the content you're putting out there, man. I, I, I want to do something to help you accelerate. Because uh, I know you can reach communities and street corners I can't touch for, for whatever reason. And I truly want to give back to the culture. That's because I used to uh, hustle on those street corners. That's why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I understand that. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you too. Anything you want to do, let me know, bro. Okay, you Dave. Know. Thank you. When, Thank when are you going to play this? When, you, when is this coming out? This will come out. Uh, this will come out probably. We'll drop it uh, two Saturdays from now. Well, I know how your social media game is, so send me all your assets so I can post up. Okay, I will. Dane, thank you, man. All right, bro. Appreciate you.